Okay, welcome to part three of four. If you haven't seen the previous two parts to this whole thing where I go through all these stats, then go and watch them. Yes, it kind of looks like I've been kidnapped. Yes, I haven't been kidnapped. Uh, let's get into the agents then, shall we? So we're talking about individual agents here on each map. This is all of tier one and a little bit of NA tier two at the start of the season. Uh, let's dive in. Today, we're going to be going through uh, Ascent, Bind, Fracture, Haven, all the agents on those maps. Let's take a look at some of the stats. Okay, so let's start off here. Just a quick little reminder. Here's what we're going to go through. So got the agents here on the kind of, you know, left hand sides. Then you've got the pick rates for those agents here. And then again, the non mirror win to loss ratios. Now to get on this sheet, you had to have played at least 10 games on the map is what I said. And you know, to get a color here, you have to have played at least 10 non mirror games. So for instance, just pick rate on ascent is so high that you didn't get 10 non mirror games. Uh, because you know, most most everyone is picking jet right uh so those are the kind of the rules for it uh for the pick rate it goes from light blue to kind of this dark purple you know the more you get picked the darker it gets and then for the win loss here you've got if you're a positive win record so for instance astro was five and five she gets a light green cypher was 12 and three he gets a dark green fade was 12 and 16 she gets a like middling red right like that's the way it works pretty simple stuff let's dive into some of these stats then and you can see that yeah i talked about that meta comp on ascent well obviously those agents that make up the meta comp are you know the ones that are getting a heavy dose of the pick rate right like pretty obvious that that uh, was always going to be the case and really the agents you know who are uh, otherwise on this list are kind of you know fill-ins for those right it might be a cypher instead of a killjoy it might be astra instead of omen it might be you know sky instead of sober or fade instead of sober or sky instead of ko like that's a lot of what is going on here very very basic map in terms of how you know the the win loss records were and stuff like that the big outlier obviously is cypher and killjoy is kind of the the sufferer of of cypher's success in a way again as i mentioned in the previous video a lot of that was nats right a lot of that was just nats on cypher being killjoy so i wouldn't read too much into that it's not that you know i think cypher is super op and killjoy whoa killjoy mega overrated on a set don't play killjoy guys like no, uh, it's it's probably just like a small sample size and, and Nats was the one who was playing Cypher. So yeah, don't worry about it too much. Killjoy is still very good on this map. Pick Killjoy. Uh, and other than that, yeah, there really isn't too much to read in to, you know, this map as a whole. Like, you know, uh, uh, because the Ascent meta is just so set in stone, it kind of, you know, doesn't give us like, you know, some of these numbers are going to be much larger on some of these other maps, uh, you know, and we're going to have more agents to talk about as well because Ascent is just boring. Okay, speaking of other maps, let's come to Bind. And uh, Bind obviously only came in later on as well. So, uh, you know, the, the sample size isn't as big for Bind because, you know, it, it did only come in kind of halfway through the VCT year. Uh, but here we go. Uh, you can see, first thing is, that we had a bit of a Brim Harbor debate. This was much closer to 50-50 early on when Bind first came back into the rotation. Seems like a lot of teams then just, you know, swapped back to Brim. I don't quite know why that was. You can see that Harbor is doing pretty well. He's 11 and 5. And so Harbor was doing fairly well on this map. But by the time we got to champs, there wasn't much Harbor being played on this map. I still kind of like Harbor though. I think Harbor is pretty good on, on Bind, I'll be honest. I, I kind of like some of the things that you can do with Harbor. Uh, I mean, we saw teams like Paper Rex play both Brim and Harbor uh, and forego the Viper instead. So who knows? But yeah, I kind of still like Harbor. A lot of teams went towards Brim. Uh, I don't quite know why exactly that was, but that was the case. Uh, Viper, obviously super high pick rate. And again, a lot of these losses for Viper don't read into it too much. It was against Paper Rex. Uh, and then, as I said, you've got kind of this battle for the fifth spot, right? Again, it's going to be one of Brimwell Harbor, Viper Race Sky, who all have insanely high pick rates. And then the battle for fifth, like look at all these numbers, right? Like everyone in the, like the teens or the, you know, the like around 10%, you know, just vying basically to be that fifth slot. Um, some of them doing better than others, right? Like Chamber, Cypher, you know, Fade, even Gecko making it work as well. Others like Sage did not have a good time. Obviously, Artist won't want me to remind him of that Sage clip. Uh, but that was, that was a good overall impression of how it went for Sage. And obviously we've just seen the obliteration of Sage in terms of being a pro agent. Uh, she is no longer a pro agent uh, that anyone is going to use anytime soon. And so, yeah, don't expect uh, any Sage anytime soon. Jet also struggled mightily as well um, and didn't do, do very well. And I think in general, Double Dive 
wasn't really the way to go on this map. I think that there just were better options, right? Be it a Chamber of Cypher, be it another Initiator. They just seemed probably like the better options. Okay, moving on to Fracture. And obviously this one has rotated out, so we won't spend as much time on it. Uh, kind of similar to Bind to me, where, you know, we've got Brim, we've got Kildrew, we've got Raze, we've got Breach, all with very high pick rates. And then it's kind of like, you know, one of the rest uh, for a lot of this. Uh, quick couple things to stand out to me. Obviously, Sova and EG... Had a very good win rate, uh, you know, as EG kind of dominated people. And we even saw some other teams like Fnatic pick it up as well uh, towards champs. And yeah, Sova was just pretty good. As I say, I feel like the more you play Sova, the kind of worse it gets. Particularly, you know, there's some surprise element early on uh, to that for EG. But, you know, Sova was pretty good. Let's be real. Um, but another thing is Jet as well. And I actually went back to the stats from the previous year as well. Because I kept stats for 2022 as well. And Jet's non-mirror win rates on Fracture and Bind just have never been good. Like, even, like, good, ver you know, better last year versions of Jet, you know, before Jet got nerfed multiple times to now, even then wasn't doing that well. And, you know, that's continued into 2023. And obviously, with the Jet nerfs we have now, you know, you would assume that, like, anyone trying still to force Jet on these maps, like, just stop. It's dead. It's over. Just don't do it. Because, you know, a lot of time it just seems to not work. But now let's come to Hayden. And this is the first one where I'm really going to ask you what I think is a very interesting question. Because if we take a look at the pick rates, again, you'll see Omen, very high. Kildra, very high. Breach, very high. Jet, very high. Sova, pretty high. Like, yeah, the meta comp makes sense. Yeah, okay, whatever, right? But there's a couple of things here on Haven that I think is interesting. When I went back and looked at the stats from 2022 as well, there were some interesting things that correlated with this year also, right? The first one is Omen is 7 and 23, you know, versus like Astra's 18 and 9, right? I can explain that somewhat in the Fnatic were quite a few of those Astra wins, right? Fnatic have played Astra on Haven the entire season. And obviously, Fnatic are going to beat most teams that they play, and most teams are going to play Omen. So those are a lot of those wins and losses, you know, for Astra and losses for Omen. You know, some of them can be attributed to Fnatic, and they're just going to be a better team than the teams they play. And that's fine, right? The thing is, though, when you go into my 2022 stats as well, the same pattern is there, where Astra is destroying Omen again. Which brings up the point, because those agents in... A, Almost all of these games, obviously, we got the recent changes to both Omen and Astra in small ways. But, you know, for most of these games that they've been playing, they were, you know, on a similar footing. Is it just that Astra is a better agent than Omen on Haven, right? Is that something that just is there, but people maybe just don't realize it yet? You know, but the, the stats and the non-mirror wins and losses now for two years in a row have been heavily favored towards Astra. Which does bring up the point, you know... Is that the case, right? And I don't have the answer for you. I'm not going to say definitively that that is the case because it is still a small sample size and that. Uh, but, you know, we're not going to have a ton of tier one games and a ton of non-mirror tier one games at the very least, you know, to talk about this kind of stuff. So, you know, I'm just going to bring it up as a potential. As the, the potential is out there that Astra is actually just clearly the better option than Omen on this map. And I'll let you be the judge. The other thing is as well, though, Breach. Now, Breach even had a worse win rate. You know, he's 14 and 19 this year. It was actually way worse last year somehow. You might think about how is that the case? But this is just another reason why, again, two years running, Breach has not done well in this map when other teams don't play Breach, right? If the other team is not playing Breach and you are playing Breach, chances are, according to the stats, you're going to lose, right? And that's why, to me, like the Viper direction, which did pretty well this year, like I think that that is the direction that teams should be going in. I think that that is the stronger direction. And especially, again, because Breach, you know, seems to struggle. And I don't know what that is, whether it's just because, you know, Breach in general is overrated or Breach, you know, on this map, like the effect that people think that it has, maybe it doesn't, or maybe it's too predictable or whatever it is, right? The Breach just doesn't do as well as perhaps his pick rate suggests he should. So that was part three of this four part series. Tomorrow's video, we're gonna go through the rest of the three maps and then we're gonna go through the overall like pick rates and win rates as well throughout the entire VCT season. So uh, go and uh, stay tuned for tomorrow's video. I'm sure you'll enjoy it. And let me know what you think of some of those Haven questions.